This paper builds on work we had already done during the Zika outbreak, where we developed Sherlock assays to detect Zika and other arboviruses. And we quickly realized that this technology could be used in rural areas, in places with little infrastructure. But because we were working with BL level four pathogens, Ebola and Lhasa, and because we wanted to make sure that this assay worked well in low income countries, we partnered closely with our collaborators in Nigeria and Sierra Leone to test this assay. Part of the work that we did in Sierra Leone was we tested our Sherlock assays on patient samples from the 2014 Ebola outbreak, and we compared these results to the current gold standard, which is PCR. And working with other scientists at Kenema Government Hospital, we were really excited when we first started seeing the results come back, because that was when we first started to see just how sensitive and how specific Sherlock could actually be. Even on these samples that were years and years old, stored in suboptimal conditions, we were still getting great results that were just as good, if not better, than the gold standard, um, but had all these additional benefits. It is important to have a tools like this one that are not only nimble and that can be easily deployed and easily be integrated in the public health care system, but we really need, and then that requires little or no technology at all to enable diagnostics. It improves um, the amount of diagnosis you can carry out in a day, thereby recording more cases and being able to treat them um, at the appropriate time, especially for Lassa fever, because if, um, Anybody coming in with um, Lassa, symptoms of Lassa, are diagnosed early. There's a high chance of that person surviving from the disease. You know, I, I'm really proud of this paper, and I'm proud of the fact that you know we were putting in motion all of the things that uh, the world is now seeing is so important. This uh, paper, the Sherlock for both Lassa and Ebola, is creating diagnostics for devastating viruses that are non-invasive, can be done from saliva and urine, that don't require extraction, so you know can skip that really onerous step that everyone is worried about that also deactivates the virus. And then it's taking it all the way to the field so that it was able to be done in, in you know, Nigeria and Sierra Leone. The next step is we are continuing that work. We're continuing it on both uh, for COVID, but also for Las and Ebola because um, these viruses, they continue to come and there's so many of them. Um, and so what we love about it is the fact that it's flexible and can change so quickly uh, and can be updated so quickly as new viruses emerge.